Hey guys, welcome back to Total Tactics FPL. It's Fran here, and I'm back with my Game Week 11 team selection. Just quickly, of course, just brushing over my Game Week 10 team review. It was 75 points, another green arrow, fortunately. Nothing crazy, nothing too massive. Now in the 69,000 rank of the world. I think a good week overall, especially since I did make one good transfer and one bad transfer. Obviously, we all know I went trust hard from Saka, so that was the net minus 13. But then obviously, Solanke, I, thought, I think it makes sense, especially since I expected for Mitrovic to have a little bit of a dire injury situation because I thought he was carrying quite an extensive injury. Um, and of course, it remains to be seen whether Mitrovic will be back. I, I think he's also about to hit a double price fall. That, that could obviously change things. Team value is quite important, but I still think Mitrovic is a great option, especially for those owners who actually had or were in a position specifically to hold Mitrovic, right? And had a bit of a deeper bench than me. I was in a bit of a different situation because my bench includes players like Neko Williams and also Shar, which I think is a mistake, especially since I'm not really backing triple Newcastle defense outside of that, that Everton fixture. So for me, I was quite happy ultimately with the transfers anyways, because going forward, Strasart still has two great games. Um, Zaha probably not the most exciting, especially when Mo Bowen still had a great game. Kinsella obviously still popped off. Haaland captaincy wasn't exactly the best, but overall still happy with the options. You know, keeping Martinelli, keeping Cancelo, keeping Haaland have been great choices overall. And heading towards game week 12, the only issue now is going to be Reese James's injury. So for game week 11, the way my team would line up is actually just a replacement for James, potentially, either through Neko Williams or through James himself. I'm in a little bit of a pick pickle because I have Neko Williams, who isn't really playing consistent minutes now for Nottingham Forest. He's actually now been displaced by Aurere. We've also seen in previous games, previous to Aurere starting, that uh, Neko Williams was actually subbed off quite early in the game. So he's clearly not in favor of the manager. I think especially with Shar as well in, in a United game at Old Trafford, I just really can't see how ne uh, Newcastle will keep a clean sheet. Potentially they will now that I've said this, but I, I just can't see why... I wouldn't make a defensive transfer this week. I think it's the absolute transfer that I have to make. I only have one transfer and Reese James, we know his injury situation is around a kind of 10 day estimate. So that actually means because of the very, very quick and short turnaround between the game week 12 deadline, that probably means that Reese James is going to miss at a minimum two game weeks of play. So he could be a transfer option out, but because I have 3.1 million in the bank, I do think it's a little bit more tempting to go out of Neko Williams uh, for the time being and actually to keep James because I do envision myself booking Reese James as a future transfer anyways. And even though Chelsea do have slightly tougher games, uh, I, I do still anticipate myself actually keeping Reese James as long as he's able to play. But I have two options, really. I have one, which is a little bit more of a one game week punty transfer that could also last quite long in Perisic. And this is obviously a fantastic opportunity to play Perisic because he gets to play versus Everton at home. This is probably a fixture where you hope that Tottenham are able to keep a clean sheet. Their defensive numbers are very, very good. If you actually look at, let's say, um, Chase on Twitter, he does projections for clean sheets. And, and Tottenham are actually second heading towards like World Cup. So I do think, obviously, Tottenham is a great transfer when you think about defenders this week. Potentially, Eric Dyer might be a little bit of a better transfer because he actually has better expected minutes. What we've seen lately is that Ryan Sessegnon has been in very, very good form. And I would actually say that Perisic, on the other hand, has actually fallen out of favor with Conte. The only thing that makes me tempted towards an Everton play with Perisic is because Ryan Sessegnon has played two games back to back. And this is still an easy opportunity, probably an easy fixture that Conte envisions where he can play Perisic, even though he's out of favor and out of form. As far as Doherty, you have an option there, but I still think he's also dealing with a minutes concern with Emerson as well, who I think Conte actually quite rates the season. So Eric Dyer is probably one of the options if you'd like to back a Tottenham player. But of course, Game Week 12, where you probably want to also play this player who's replacing either Neko Williams or James, you want them to play and they're playing United. So that's going to be the one sort of small concern. I do envision this kind of Spurs pick as a one game gamble. So you have to kind of see in the future how that bears out for your team. Is Paris is someone who you're expecting to play as your third player or are you expecting him to kind of come in uh, and show out here and there but of course the added cost is probably going to be a little bit of the concern for any manager thinking about bringing Perisic in otherwise as I said you could consider Dyer as a fourth option the safer option of course is to actually bring in a Brighton defender the reason why is because the Brentford game isn't necessarily the best they're obviously playing Brent Brentford at home and that's not exactly the best fixture but we also have seen that this Brentford team has been rather quiet lately uh, with the exception to the penalty they got recently and I would actually say Webster and Dunk probably are fantastic options in this kind of very short two game week window and specifically because they're probably going to replace Neko Williams in this sort of uh, transfer structure you have the opportunity to play someone in Brighton for game weeks 11 and 12. Game week 12 is the best opportunity to play a Brighton player because they're getting to play versus Nottingham Forest where you'd hopefully expect them to keep a clean sheet. They actually were very, very defensive versus uh, Tottenham as well. 
they were able to shut down most of the Tottenham chances. And actually, if you look at the expected goals in that game, Tottenham were actually very, very, were struggling a lot to actually create chances in that game. Brighton actually beat them on XG. Obviously, it was a very, very kind of low creative affair. I don't think much was expected from that game, but it just shows that still with uh, De Zerbi in charge, that Brighton can still be quite a compact defensive side, which is a positive, right? You want to bring in Webster and Dunk exactly for that reason, especially if they're going to cover you for two game weeks in particular. And so therefore, I think Webster is actually probably the safest transfer for me because in my team, I still have the issue of Neka Williams. I don't really want to play him anytime in the future. And I just need to plug in this gap specifically where uh, Reese James is going to play and also where Neka Williams isn't really going to offer much. And that mirror matchup is really nice. Having Webster or Dunk there in, in that position gave me 12. So I think it's a perfect kind of transfer uh, to cover the gave me 12 blank specifically. And I'm therefore going to go with Webster or Dunk. In the midfield, I'll actually be retaining the exact same team. I don't plan on taking a hit. So far in the season, I've, I've been fortunate enough to not actually take a hit. Potentially, I will later on when I'm playing a little bit more aggressive, but I still think I already made that sort of aggressive move last week when I actually went into Trossard, and that's exactly why I only have one chance for this week. Martinelli has a great game versus Leeds. Obviously, I'll be missing out on Saka, unfortunately. He looks very good, very informed, still scored versus Europa uh, in the Europa League game. Madison has fantastic fixture. It is a mirror matchup with Zaha, but we know both teams uh, are, are able to actually lose their clean sheets. Both Leicester and Crystal Palace this season have been very, very poor when it comes to defense. We've talked about Crystal Palace's defensive numbers when it comes to the underlying statistics. It actually is rather low, even though Crystal Palace are expected to actually do quite well because their run of fixture is actually rather simple. As far as Madison, of course, we've seen that this Leicester team, they now have easier fixtures, but we still saw them concede, for example, late in the stage, uh, late in the Bournemouth game, and, and that just pretty much shows that we can't really have any expectations of this lesser team, but that's not a problem, right? We're just simply banking on attackers here. Both Madison and Zaha are very capable players. Zaha's on penalties. Madison's obviously a very creative threat, so very happy to own both these players here in this fixture, and I think Madison's probably just a transfer in game week 13 where he has that matchup for City. There's no reason to take Madison out of my team. I think even though he had a blank last week, he still looks like a very, very capable player, and no real concerns really with my midfield for the time being. As far as the forwards, let's actually get over with the captaincy as well. Holland's going to be my captain. Kane is going to be my vice captain. It's obviously between them this week, where I think Kane obviously has an exceptionally high ceiling versus Everton. Yes, Everton have been a very defensive team, but obviously Tottenham at home is going to be quite a promising fixture to actually play versus Everton. I, I do think there's obviously still a gap in these two teams, even though we've seen Everton perform quite well lately, especially versus United. Uh, as far as Holland, I mean, simply put, I mean, he's undeniable, right? I think this Liverpool team still shows some frailties in defense. We still saw them concede versus Rangers, a team that actually has been absolutely getting destroyed in the Europe, uh, in the Champions League group. So I think, yes, obviously Liverpool beating Rangers 7-1 might be sort of indicative of another situation where, for example, when, when they beat Bournemouth 9-0 and then actually continue to lose these clean sheets, there is going to be still be, I think, a weakness in this Liverpool team. Joe Gomez is still, for example, a downgrade on Trent in some various aspects when we're talking about attack we've also seen very poor performances from joe gomez himself from the defensive end so it doesn't mean he's an immediate upgrade over trent in that aspect too and overall i think this liverpool team are are quite thin when it comes to depth uh, but they are relying on some of the youth when it comes to carvalho and also uh harvey elliott the thing is this city team is just simply on a different level simply probably the best team in the world and Haaland specifically just looks like the most lethal striker in the system so Haaland's going to be my captain this week. It's very simple. Uh, Solanke is obviously someone that I actually am very happy to own because Solanke is someone who in the championship also was able to score both, both games versus Fulham. We've also seen that this Fulham team is still very, very poor on defense. Their expected numbers are the absolute worst, even if you actually disinclude that Newcastle game where they had a red card. So that's not exactly the game where, you know, they got blown open. It was actually multiple games or even recently for when you're looking at the West Ham game, that's a good example to see how poor this Fulham defense is. And we all talk about how poor Bournemouth are themselves when it comes to creating chances, but we saw them score versus Nottingham Forest. We saw them score as well last week. And I think it just shows that this Bournemouth team at least is very capable of scoring versus weaker teams. And that's exactly what we have here when it comes to the defense of Fulham. So very happy to own Solanke here. Uh, and the bench, of course, is just going to be Iris and Andreas, Shar and Neko Williams in that sort of order. Andreas is obviously someone I'd love to play, but Shar and Neko Williams, there's really not much between them. I think Shar is obviously probably going to get one or two points himself. Neko Williams probably nailed for one point unless he manages to fumble with um, some sort of miraculous assist or goal. But that's going to be the situation this week, and that's going to be how I'm lining up for this week. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys very, very shortly for the live stream.